Good morning. I am Dharma Shri, a research fellow from Nanyang Technological University. Today, I am here to present my research area, wave interaction with submerged horizontal flexible breakwaters. My co-authors are Dr. Saurav Mantal from Ocean Engineering Division, CSIR, NIO, India, and Professor Adrian Law from Nanyang Technological University. Before going into the, uh, the actual research work I'm doing, I would like to give a brief introduction on the topic. Why submerged breakwater? Submerged breakwater act as shock protection measures that attenuate the wave energy before it hit against the shoreline and cre create any complications or ill effects of wave ero ero uh, shore erosion. Then submerged breakwater, the idea is not quite new. It goes back to 1950s when the semi-infinite plate was used as submerged sheet for finite water depth. Later that work got extended with the addition of uh, infinite water depth and also by considering finite plates. There were many research works also in this area that considers uh, rigid submerged plates that act as breakwaters as well as heave plates. But in all these cases, the rigidity of the structure or, or of the breakwater is so high that the deformation was not considered or sometimes even the deformation is neglected in the wave interaction analysis. For our present study, we will be considering uh, the deformation and its effect on the surface waves. In addition to breakwater, uh, these submerged flexible viscoelastic sheets can also be used as silk curtains if they are held vertically uh, as heave plates as I have also mentioned before because there are works done by Mohapatra in 2018 considering elastic plates and their deflection and also for the production of energy in piezoelectric wave energy converters. So as I have mentioned, we, we will be using viscoelastic sheet. Viscoelastic means the sheet we will be using has two property, viscosity and elasticity. The material used is polydimethyl siloxane. And during the preparation through three components were considered, that is the base curing agent and white oil. White oil is added to adjust the buoyancy of the material. We want it to be neutrally buoyant with, the, with almost the same density as that of water. The amount of white oil was added was determined by trial and error method. The amount of curing agent added determined how stiff the sheet need to be. For example, if we add less curing agent into the material during preparation, the sheet will be very flexible. And if we add more curing agent, the sheet will be quite stiff. We have considered three sheets for our study with different percentage of curing agent four, seven, and 10 which means the 4% sheet will be very flexible and 10% sheets will be quite stiff. The properties of these sheets were determined using small amplitude oscillatory shear test in a rheometer. And we have determined two parameters, storage modulus represented by G prime and loss modulus represented by G double prime. It can be seen that both these parameters increase with increase in the amount of curing agent from four to 10%. From the rheological point of view, it can be seen that our material resembles more like a void material. So their elastic modulus and viscosity can be calculated from the values of G prime and G double prime by assuming a void material assumption. The wave experiments were conducted in a wave flume, which is eight meter long, 0.3 meter wide and one meter deep. Uh, we have the one meter long viscoelastic sheet held at the middle using a bracket, which will be shown here. Uh, the wave maker is equipped with a piston type wave maker on one side and a mesh beach on the other side. We have uh, six ultrasound sensors, three kept in, on the open water region near the leading edge of the sheet and three near the trailing edge of the sheet. So under wave action, the wave propagates from the wave maker, pass through the, the three sensors, then along the length of the sheet and then pass through the next three sensors and will get uh, dissipated near the beach. 
we have considered seven wave periods from 0.5 to 1 second with 0.1 second interval. The wave height was kept a constant of 2 centimeters. Uh, the depth of submergence of the sheet, three, three conditions were used. Uh, 5 centimeters submergence from the mean water level, 7.5 centimeter and 10 centimeter from the mean water level. Uh, these, uh, this figure shows the time series data that we have obtained from the six ultrasound sensors, the first three near the leading edge and the last three near the trailing edge. It can be seen that all, there is a region, there is a boxed region in the plot because we have only considered the three fully developed waves in that region in order to reduce the effects of any reflection from the beach side. Each experiment was repeated three times to check the repeatability. So at the end for each set of wave parameters, we have nine waves considered for the analysis. We have also recorded uh, the uh, displacement profile using high resolution video cameras. From the theoretical model, we have used a linear wave theory. The fluid was assumed to be incompressible, inviscid, and irrotational. The submerged viscoelastic sheet is modeled as an Euler Bernoulli beam with a complex elastic modulus. The complex modulus, the real part of it, deals with the elastic elasticity of the sheet, and the imaginary part deals with the viscosity of the sheet and these properties were calculated based on the void material assumption as mentioned during the rheometer testing. From the experiment and theoretical consideration, it can be seen that the phase of the experiment and the theory match quite well, but there is a difference in the amplitude. We, uh, we uh, consider that we this, this discrepancy between the experimental and theoretical model is a contribution of the end condition. Because in theory, it assumes that it has a fixed edge, but in reality, uh, though it's provided as a fixed edge, but there is an additional structure to hold the sheet in position. The interaction of the wave with the additional supporting structure is not considered in the theory. As I have told, we have considered a three different depth of immersion, 10 centimeter, seven point and five centimeter depth of immersion of the sheet. So the bottom figure, the grayscale profile clearly shows that and the first one is 10, which decreases to 7.5 and then to five. The top white, uh, white part shows the surface wave and the bottom thick white region represents the sheet deformation. If you look at the first column, that is for the one, uh, 10 centimeter depth of immersion, US1 and US4, there is a clear reduction in the wave energy from US1 to US4. For the 7.5 also, we can see that there is a clear decrease in the wave energy spectrum from US1 to US4, though a small peak arises near the 20 radian per second. But for uh, when the depth of submergence were further reduced to five, uh, five, five centimeters, it can be seen that there is a decrease in the wave energy spectrum as well as there is a shift in the frequency of the wave. And that can be seen very clearly from the grayscale profile that when the depth of the submergence decreases, the surface wave becomes highly nonlinear. This is a limitation of the theory we have used because we use linear wave theory and linear and based on that theory, uh, this uh, nonlinearity cannot be achieved, cannot be uh, um, determined. From the experimental results, we have derived the following conclusions. That is for deeper submergence, for the present case, it is 10 centimeter submergence. It was seen that the wave pattern of the submerged sheet significantly depend on the rheological properties of the sheet. Also for the deeper submergence, in some cases we have obtained a very good uh, transmission loss and this transmission loss was mainly due to the presence of a creation of standing waves on the top of the submerged sheet. So the creation of standing waves um, prevented the trans the um, much of the trans uh, much of the energy from transmitting to the trailing side. 
but in the case of the smaller submergence, uh, the reduction in the wave energy to the transmitted region was mainly due to nonlinear waves, as we have seen that there is a shift in the peak of the frequency to a higher frequency, and also from the leading edge deflection. That was another demerit of the theory because the theory didn't assume any, um, uh, the theory didn't consider any sub supporting structure, but the supporting structure is actually providing an additional st uh, rigidity or stiffness near the leading edge, which causes a significant uh, reflection back to the open ocean or, or the, in, the, in this case, to the open water. So there was a discrepancy of one order between the theory and the experimental part. Uh, for the flexible sheet with a smaller submergence, it was found that there was almost 99 percentage reduction in wave transmitted energy, which is which proves that our structure is is highly efficient in uh, acting as a wave damping mechanism. For the stiffer sheets, on the other hand, for seven and ten percentage, a 50 to 90 percentage reduction in the wave energy transmission is recorded. So from the results, it is seen that um, our flexible horizontal submerged viscoelastic sheet acts as an excellent um, wave damper for the wave parameters we have considered in the study. And thank you.